do you enjoy working with your hands being outdoors and repairing things well becoming an hvac technician in 2021 might be for you in this video we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of becoming an hvac tech we're going to cover compensation we're going to cover the jobs market how competitive it is and we're also going to compare hvac techs with some of the other trades but first what is an hvac tech and what do they do hvac techs install or repair heating central air conditioning refrigeration systems and this includes oil burners hot air furnaces and heating stoves hvac actually stands for heating ventilation and cooling and actually sometimes they add an r at the end and that stands for refrigeration hvac techs are tasked with installing cleaning and maintaining hvac systems inspecting them testing them in their components repairing worn or defective parts, and just performing ongoing maintenance of HVAC systems. Sometimes HVAC techs working for different companies will actually be involved in the sales process, and they will try and sell products and services to various customers. And they can work in a variety of industries, including residential real estate, commercial real estate, and government buildings. To become an HVAC tech, just like some of the other trades, it doesn't require too much education. Most practicing HVAC techs have completed a high school diploma, and then they've also completed some kind of community college program, a trade school, and they have some kind of post-secondary certificate to go along with their high school education. Many of these programs often last between six months and two years, and they often don't cost nearly as much as trying to get a bachelor's degree at a college or university. Next, we'll get into the compensation of HVAC techs in the United States. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2020, the average base salary for an HVAC tech, assuming just 40 hours a week, was $53,410. This was more than auto mechanics and solar panel installers. It was less than plumbers, electricians, and elevator mechanics. So some of the other trades tend to pay a little bit more than HVAC techs, assuming 40-hour work weeks. But HVAC techs have been seeing pretty good wage growth in the past couple of years. According to the government, in the year 2000, the average base salary for an HVAC tech, assuming 40-hour weeks, was $34,180. This grew to $53,410 in 2020. This means that, on average, over these two decades, the average wage growth was about $915. But just looking at the past five years, since 2015, the wage growth has increased to about $1,000 per year. So they are seeing better wage growth in recent years than in the past although some particular trades such as elevator mechanics they're seeing crazy wage growth but this particular wage growth is higher than some of the other trades now plotting this wage growth into the future this means by 2024 the average base salary would rise to fifty seven thousand seventy three dollars and by 2030 sixty two thousand five hundred and sixty seven dollars and the other thing that's pretty interesting is certain states pay hvac techs a lot better than others according to the government alaska the uh the final frontier state pays hvac techs the greatest wage assuming 40 hour weeks with an average base salary of seventy nine thousand six hundred and thirty dollars this is followed by washington dc hawaii the state of washington and the state of massachusetts basically all the dark blue states in this map tend to pay hvac techs a lot more than the lighter blue colored states up to this point we've been assuming 40 hour work weeks hvac techs are entitled to paid overtime not every occupation is teachers restaurant managers a lot of people in the legal industry they don't get paid overtime they're salaried hvac techs are not salaried uh, they'll get typically time and a half above 40 hours a week and in certain states like california they'll get double time and they'll even get double time if their particular company has built into the contract so a lot of hvac techs make a lot more than the average wage and they do this through paid overtime which can really increase their wages for a particular year the other way to really boost your income as an hvac tech is to become a general contractor at that point you're not really an employee anymore you're managing a team of hvac techs and maybe you're installing a new hvac system in maybe a new school or a new commercial building at that point you're trying to win contracts and it's it's a little bit different but that is another avenue a lot of hvac techs can take to really boost their income in fact, when you look at the number of self-employed HVAC techs compared to some of the other trades, it's pretty good. About 7% of HVAC techs are self-employed. This is a lot higher than elevator mechanics who basically very, very, very few of them are self-employed. It's also higher than solar panel installers, but auto mechanics, 
a higher percentage of them have their own shops than say uh, HVAC techs owning their own business. So that covers the compensation of HVAC techs. Next, we're going to get into the job market. How competitive is it to become an HVAC tech in 2021? The first thing we have to understand is the HVAC tech workforce is pretty large, but it's not as big as the electrician or auto mechanic workforce. According to the government in 2020, there were 344,020 HVAC techs employed in the entire United States. There was more plumbers, auto mechanics, and electricians, but there's far more HVAC techs than, say, elevator mechanics, solar panel installers, and aircraft mechanics. So there's a lot more opportunity all over the United States. It's not a small niche occupation. And unlike some other occupations, the number of employed HVAC techs has been growing over the past two decades. In the year 2000, there was 197,930 employee HVAC techs. This hit a high in 2008 to about 261, then dipped during the Great Recession, mostly because housing starts fell so much during the Great Recession, just weren't building anything in the United States, at least for residential real estate, and that really influenced the number of employed HVAC techs. Since then, it's been boosted. We're building more and more in the United States these last couple of years. And in 2020, the number of employed rose to 344,020 employed HVAC techs. When you look at other occupations, they're not seeing this kind of growth. In fact, the, the workforce has almost, hasn't quite, but it's kind of almost doubled in about two decades, which is a great sign. The U.S. is somewhat bullish on the future prospects of HVAC techs. They're anticipating about a 4% growth in the number of jobs over the next 10 years. This is on par with plumbers who also have a 4% forecast, but it's less than, say, electricians who have the government's a little bit more bullish on the future job prospects of electricians over HVAC techs. A 4% growth rate would mean that by 2030, there would be about 357,000 employed HVAC techs in the United States. Now, one way to really get a real-time estimate of the demand for HVAC techs in the United States is to look at job boards. Look at how many job postings there are for HVAC techs on Glassdoor.com, Indeed.com, and LinkedIn. And this can really give us a real-time estimate of how much demand there is for HVAC techs right now. So I went on Glassdoor.com and I searched for HVAC tech in the United States, and it gave me 8,991 job opportunities. On Indeed, 19,734 job postings. And on LinkedIn, 29,405 job postings for HVAC techs in the United States. So when you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, it looks okay. There are job postings for HVAC techs all over the country. There isn't quite as much demand for HVAC techs as say, I think plumbing, there was a little bit greater demand, but there's much more demand for HVAC techs than elevator mechanics. I think there was just 200 job postings for elevator mechanics in the United States on one of these job platforms. So it looks pretty good, especially on LinkedIn. I think it's above average when you're looking at different trades. Finally, one thing people like to do when they're trying to choose a career is to figure out their Myers-Briggs personality type and compare it to people in different occupations. According to the Myers-Briggs company, certain occupations tend to have certain personality types. According to the Myers-Briggs company, the most likely type to become an HVAC tech is the director, the ESTJ. This is followed by the persuader, the ESTP, the debater, the ENTP, and the crafter, the ISTP. Notice that each of these occupations is thinking over feeling. So those are some pros and cons of becoming an HVAC tech in 2021. Overtime is definitely an option for HVAC techs to boost their income. And they also have the opportunity to become general contractors and own their own business. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my electrician and or plumbing video. It's a great way to compare the different trades and find out which career is best for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.